this Sabbath, I am resting by doing something that has brought me much joy and peace over many years. In the year 2000, I went to a yarn shop and paid an older German woman to teach me how to knit socks. She taught me about double pointed needles, how to knit in the round, and the most amazing thing, continental knitting. So I'm learning to juggle five needles in my hand and hold my yarn in an entirely different way than I ever have. Around 2002, I took a certified nursing assistant class at the local community college. There was much time sitting, waiting for my turn to demonstrate my newly acquired skills. While I waited, I knit socks. By this time, the thrill of turning a heel and having real socks with fancy cuffs was long past. I didn't want to think about knitting, counting or picking up stitches and knitting gussets. I just knit tube socks. I knit tube socks that were knit one per one ribbing for about seven or nine inches and then I just knit in a circle for another seven or nine inches and I decreased the stitches and voila, there's the toe. And I used my fancy Kitchener stitch to stitch them up and my socks are ready to wear. But I digress. My point to this tale of sock knitting is that it has been a year, two, maybe three, since I knit a sock. My fingers stumbled at the beginning, trying to remember how to hold needles and yarn and find my gauge. But I have a tiny knit two pearl two cuff started. And there must be an endorphin release because the whole thing in my hand the lovely rosewood knitting needles and the deep blue colorway of my yarn just make me sigh. There will be no work on this project. It is for the joy, for the motion, the rhythm of knit to, purl to, knit to, purl to, and the amazement of seeing string and sticks, creating a warm garment, that's not work, that is shalom. Sunbeams now streak across the valley before me. My morning visitor sits high above and sings out the glory of the day, and the moon still shines through my window. I am hopeful for this day, Father. I look forward to the gift of your presence here. Keep me, Abba. Let my heart and mind find rest in your goodness. Let me find contentment in my solitude. And may the joy I find in your presence be shared with those who are seeking light. O oh, Father, let me not take your name in vain. Let your name, your character, be seen in me, your child. Thank you, Father Elohim, that I am here today to bear witness of your great love and mercy in the land of the living. Thank you for the spirit of truth being poured out and on to your people. Thank you that the Word became flesh, taught us the way, and dwelt with us. Thank you. Thank you that there is a coming, righteous, mighty King, Yeshua, King of Kings. Yes, Abba, I long for that day. 
Make us ready, Father. Tear down the idols. Destroy the strongholds. Yes, Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I searched the homestead for the spot to spend the morning before the February heat of the day becomes too bright. I settled here in my greenhouse sanctuary. My heart is happy as I see my efforts rewarded in tiny yellow flowers and hopeful leaf buds. Finally, the lettuce has found its happy place and all the leaves that fed my ducks a Sabbath ago have been replaced with growth from leftover leaves. I plan to plant a tree in the duck yard this week. My ribs, whatever the damage was, have healed to a point of very infrequent pain. So digging the hole, preparing the soil, and getting it secured and protected in its spot is very doable. It will be planted in the duck yard and share the water runoff from the duck pan. My potatoes and the seeds from a buffalo gourd planted in large black plastic pots have all been dug up and eaten. It seems attempting to grow vegetables outside is a pointless endeavor. How do people do it? I have been trying for three years. <laughs> It does appear the greenhouse is secure now. I will keep trying. I have planted peas and more buffalo gourds, and always I am hopeful. I only fail if I refuse to try again, and I refuse to give up on what is good and right to do. I think I've set a boundary in my heart and in my mind. A year. A year from when the world ended as I knew it, and I found Bob peaceful in his covers, a gentle release on his face. He was gone. I have never been able to express the relief, the peace that flooded my heart before the reality took over and the panic. No, Bob. No, no, no. Please, no. Ten months later, all the Shabbats, all the new moons that have passed, and my heart still aches. And my mind races. What am I to do? And Father whispers this. The what you have done. The next step. The good and right thing. I, your Elohim, will ask of you. Believe in my perfect love for you. And you will not fear. For everything and every person along this path that you encounter will work to accomplish my purpose in the lives of those I have chosen. And now it's 1130 and the sun is bearing down through 70% sunshade, too hot on my skin. So I will bid farewell to mountain views and dirt floors and take cover in the shelter of my tiny shed. And now it's 4.30 p.m. Sabbath. The animals have all been fed, and yet the sun still warms my neck and shoulders. It's been a lovely, restful day. I even took a nap. I've enjoyed tending my plants today the ones that were so damaged in the freeze that swept through in early winter. 
I've cut away all the dead, the dying, the brown-tipped edges of plants that survived an extremely harsh winter. It is amazing, the will to survive. Even my tiny lemon tree is growing. It's growing the tiniest of leaf buds. New growth. Yes. The promise of a new season. The hope of growth. The determination and stamina to face the wind, the sun, and whatever flies in your face. It is hope born in the newness of life. I am but a seed planted in a garden of my caretaker's design. We wait expectantly as soil is raked and cleared and warmed by the season of the sun. We can't make ourselves grow or sprout or produce fruit. The same way a seed waits until the opportune moment and of a sudden breaks open, and roots growing gingerly, seeking water and nutrition. Is so how we wait while Father provides the sun, the rain, the proper time. Once our roots are set, he begins to grow us. It is not our work that grows a seed to fruition. Our work is to plant the seed to watch, to assist with water and nourishment when needed, just like Father watches over us, watering us with his perfect love, growing us with discipline and training, feeding us with his word. The sun slides away and the intensity of light fades as the minutes click by on a clock. I feel hope rising. As I looked closely at my plants, I could see the change coming. What leaves were set to die could be dusted away. What remains, the survivors, the ones who took a hit but still reach out to the sun, and most importantly, new growth. New growth announcing, I may look beat up and damaged, sitting in this container all alone, but my roots are good. I hope you've enjoyed this reading from my journal, and I hope that it will inspire you to rest, to look around you with a grateful heart at all of the beautiful gifts that he created just for us. Rest in his love, rest in his care. May the road rise to meet you when the sun kiss your face. May there always be a miracle waiting just to bless your day. Life won't always hand you roses. Don't let it get you down. Keep your eyes on what your goal is and your feet on solid ground. Take this with you where you go. You are love, love, love.